Well, happy Tuesday, Faith Family. It's Dr. Book. I decided to do something a little different this week and come to you via video instead of my usual email updates. I sure wish I had a middle school or high school student with me today to help piece together this video as I'm not real good with this technology and I know they could have done a much better job with it. So I thank you in advance for your patience as we roll through this today. I want to start by thanking you all again. Uh, thank you to our parents and our guardians and our students uh, whose flexibility and patience is so deeply appreciated uh, during this very unique time in educational history here in America. So thankful for our teachers, our administrators, our counselors, our staff uh, who inspire me every day with unique ways that they're finding to stay in communication with you and to piece together a high quality education even during this remote time. I thank God for Junior Scott Rubin, uh, who has come a long way. He had a medical episode uh, last week, an emergency. He's been on a vent ventilator, uh, but he's off that now. And I praise God that though he's still uh, in the hospital, he's eating and he's sitting up and he's talking. And uh, prayers have been answered for the Rubin family and for Scott and his brother Sean, who attend here. I'm thankful for the brave healthcare workers in this country who put themselves in harm's way, along with our first responders. Uh, these people do this every day, and especially in a crisis like that, it's deeply appreciated. I think of the logistics people and the truckers and the grocery workers and government officials and other essential businesses, pharmacies who are staying open uh, so that you and I can continue to exist here in the United States as this pandemic continues to sweep our country. You know, almost two years to the date uh, today, uh, I got hit by a car on my bicycle. I was coming down Alta from Vista Run and heading down toward Pavilion Center, Palo Verde High School on my left. And uh, at my weight on a bike, I'd picked up some pretty good speed going downhill. I had a green light as I was going through the intersection at Pavilion Center in Alta when a car who was coming westbound up Alta, decided to turn left or southbound onto Pavilion Center right in front of me. They clearly didn't see me. I didn't have any time to hit my brakes and there was obviously a collision. Uh, when I regained consciousness, I just remember somebody asking me if I could feel my legs. When I came to, I realized there was somehow up on the roof of the car that hit me, bleeding pretty good from my lower leg. Uh, I was taken by ambulance to Summerlin Hospital and after a bunch of CT scans and x-rays, all, it, all I really needed uh, was a bunch of stitches to take care of the gash uh, in my lower leg, and I was fine. But candidly, I haven't been on my bike on a road in almost two years. I've been riding on a trainer in my backyard where I just stay in one place, don't even need to wear my helmet, and I'm good to go. I get a little bit of exercise in. But just two days ago on Sunday, uh, after going to online church, I decided to hop on my bike and, and get it off the rollers and get it off the trainer and... and right around Summerlin. So I came down Charleston and I saw this sign uh, at Red Rock uh, Casino and Resort. And when it said Vegas Strong and Vegas Stronger, I, I was reminded of how resilient uh, this town is. You know, what we came through after the recession in 2008, 2009, and then obviously one October, I, I have seen this city come back uh, like no city in the world. And I sit here today with full confidence that Las Vegas is going to rally, that our families are going to rally, that our schools going to rally, that our economy is going to rally, that our health is going to rally, and that we're going to be okay once we get through this uh, crisis. And so I thank God that we live in such an entrepreneurial, innovative city. Uh, I just think that seeps into the DNA of all, all of us. I think it certainly does here at Faith Lutheran. And I just thank and praise God for all of you. I was reading in the RJ last week that Unicast uh, put out a study on how well individual states are doing with social distancing. And Nevada got an A. And that just means that you and I are staying home more, we're traveling less, we're getting out in public more, we're uh, listening to the cries of the medical professionals asking us to practice social distancing and only travel when we really need to get out and do so. And so I thank all of you, and I think it's because of that and the entrepreneurial nature of our city uh, that we're going to come back. And we are not just going to be Vegas strong, but we will indeed be Vegas stronger. When I give tours to people who are visiting Faith Lutheran for the first time, at the end of the tour, they're always amazed by our beautiful campus and our state-of-the-art facilities. But 100% of those tours end this way. I tell them, you haven't even seen the best part of our campus, and that's the students and the faculty and staff who work here. They are indeed what makes this place special. And so if you're like me, I miss being together. 
we don't get into education because we like doing this from a remote standpoint. We don't get into education because we don't enjoy the relationships that we have with our students and our colleagues and our families. And so what I thought I'd do today is give you a little bit of a virtual tour of the school. I'm going to stop in a couple of different places and uh, just offer a Bible verse at each place. And hopefully when you see these spaces, perhaps it's one of your classrooms or an athletic field or a stage that you're used to performing on, perhaps it'll conjure up some great memories that you've had here. And Lord willing, we'll get back together here this spring sooner than later and uh, can resume life as we knew it before this whole thing. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, 11. The trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to God. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices to the Lord in praise and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. 2 Chronicles 5, 13. In the beginnings, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 1. But in the beginning, Eve stole first, Adam stole second, Gideon rattled the pitcher, and the prodigal son came home. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 6, 35. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Whatever you do, work heartily, as if for the Lord and not for men. Colossians 3.23 To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Hebrews 12.28 Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Matthew 7, verse 24. Our ancestors carried along with them a portable temple. See what I did there? Through the wilderness. In it, they kept the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments written on them. Acts 7, 44. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Psalm 96, 1 and 2. Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. When you were dead in your sins, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins which had condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Colossians 2, 13 and 14. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Acts 17, 26. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Romans 12, 13. Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the poor, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead for the case of the widow. Isaiah 1.17 For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Romans 15.4 Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Mark 10, 14. Each of you should use whatever gift you've been given to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 1 Peter 4, verse 10. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus replied, no, I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven. Matthew 18, 22. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring the good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvations, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Isaiah 52, 7.
Don't you know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way that you get the prize. 1 Corinthians 9.24 Ecclesiastes 3 says that there's a time for everything. And verse 4 says there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. First position, second, third, fourth, that's all I know. Well, hopefully seeing some of those spaces and places on campus uh, brings back some good memories of experiences you've had with your teachers and with your classmates. And Lord willing, uh, we'll get you back here on campus sooner than later and can continue to make memories uh, with each other. I want you guys to know that we love you, we miss you, and very much look forward to getting the Faith family back together on campus. In the meantime, have a blessed day.